Ladies and gentlemen, my guest on Chair Shots to the Cranium Interviews is a very well-known professional wrestler who has experienced great success since his debut in 1987. He's wrestled for WWE and ECW as a successful singles and tag team wrestler. He's experienced success as an actor, and he's making appearances on the independent wrestling scene, most notably with Universal Championship Wrestling. He's also part of the historic and accomplished Anuwai'i family. I'm proud to have as my guest, Lloyd Anuwai'i. Lloyd, how are you today? I'm doing good, my brother. How are you today? You're scheduled to appear at the Universal Championship Wrestling Show called Super Brawl on February the 2nd. This is not your first time wrestling for UCW. Tell me a little bit about your experience with them. Uh, well, me and my brother, we go to uh, Sons of Samoa, and we did a show where we went against uh, Lodi and uh, his partner. So, uh, you know, we had we had a great match, but, uh, you know, that let's say that we won the battle and lost the war. But uh, with UCW, you know, they put on a hell of a wrestling show and, uh, you know, a lot of great talent. And uh, I'm going to be one of them, so therefore, they better look out because in Griffin, Georgia, I'm on a I'm on a mission. What are your thoughts about how they have a nice blend of well-known seasoned wrestlers like yourself and young up-and-coming wrestlers that are still trying to make a big name for themselves? Well, uh, I mean, you know, knowing all the all the you know uh, you know names that they have on there, you know, and uh, all these newcomers that are coming up, you know, these young guys, you know, they're actually. Uh, you know, there's a lot of good talent out there, and uh, you know, just that uh, we just gotta look at some uh, some of the the positive guys out there. You know, some some guys, you know, they go out there, and I put it this way: you have some guys that have heart that want to be in the wrestling business, and you got guys that just want to be on TV and the glory. So you can pick those ones out. And uh, right now, in uh, UCW, I see there's a lot of good talent, and I uh, you know hope continue that. Could, they could continue getting better and more talent, younger guys. I'll tell you, what's attractive to me is how you see a, uh, see these very talented young guys that a lot of people may not even know about yet, and they get in the ring with well-known superstars, and those matches, are not they're not boring, they're not slow. I mean, they're fast-paced, and they're extremely entertaining. Yeah, uh, yeah, they are, you know, but, you know, I'm, I'm old school, and... Uh, you know, like you got a lot of new moves these guys are doing, and I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not a fan of all those high flying, uh, you know, moves that they're doing because you know it can it can ruin and, and end somebody's career right away. You know, in case you know they do something wrong and they land wrong or you know whatever the case may be. You know, so you, you gotta watch it. You know, I'm old school. I like to stick to just wrestling and and, and, and kicking butt and taking names. You just keep it grounded, huh? That's right. <laughs> Now, you know, I've seen firsthand, you know, the veteran wrestlers are coming there and help the guys, and you, know, you kind of just get this feeling that they're passing along their knowledge, and at the same time, they're still tearing it up in the ring like the old days. Yeah, I mean, uh, you got, you know, guys like myself that have been around the business for a long time. You got guys like, uh, you know, Scott Steiner that, that works for UCW. Uh, you got so many older talent there and, and guys that have been around for so many years, and and you know it's it's a good thing to to hand off the talent you know to uh, I'm sorry to you know give them some experience and knowledge and hopefully that they listen and understand you know and, and that's the main thing right uh, these young guys they have to keep their ears open and their eyes open and and, and, and listen and understand uh, you know the older guys are giving them a lot of you know critique and experience you know for what they've done so that, you know they just gotta listen up and try to take that all in. Let's take a trip down memory lane, if we can, uh, to the beginning of your career. As I mentioned in my opening statement, you started your career in the late 80s, and you were trained by your Hall of Fame father, Afa, and your Hall of Fame uncle, Sika. When did you know that professional wrestling was your calling? And tell me about the training you endured from your father and your uncle. <laughs> well, uh, to get in the business, it, it was, it, I, mean, I shouldn't say easy, you know, but, uh, you know, my family being in it. And uh, I really wanted to, uh, you know, start off in law enforcement. But, you know, I seen all these big checks my dad was bringing home. And I used to go to, you know, when I was younger in the locker rooms and all that stuff. And I seen all the guys. And then I decided, I said, what the heck? Uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, it's in the blood. So I just continued, you know, following my, my dad and my uncle's legacy in their footsteps. 
How much does your family consult with one another for advice? Like, for example, when, when Roman Reigns came into the business and the Usos, when they began their career, how much how much do y'all feed off one another and get advice? And give advice? Well, I mean, you know, uh, we all, we all you know, try to help each other, but I'm not trying to put our family up on the top, but, you know, it's, it's kind of natural for us in this business because we were raised up around it. So, you know, to help each other, it, we're there, but it's kind of natural when we just go by what we learn and what we're taught. So, uh, you know, it, it's kind of simple where, you know, hey, we're going to go out there, we're going to go out there and do what we got 110%. How often does the entire uh, Anawaii family get together? I'm sure it has to be one heck of a family reunion when you guys get together. <laughs> yeah, we uh, we usually do our family reunions every, uh, reunions every two years, but uh, we have our immediate, uh, you know, sibling fam- uh, reunion we have every year. So we try to, you know, stay close to each other, and uh, we are a close family. That's you know, uh, yeah. It's 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 not too many people have, you know, relationships like that where they can always be around their family. We try to stay close to each other. We're raised that way, and uh, it'll continue on. Listen, man, uh, can I just come and sit in the corner? I mean, I won't say a word. I'll just just I just want to listen to all the stories, man. <laughs> and I make a mean macaroni uh, yeah. and cheese too, man. I'll bring that with me. Well, you know, there's history there. You know, you get us all together, there's a lot of stories. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we can write a couple of books on that. No doubt. No doubt. Man, that's got to be something else. Well, let's talk about the uh, the tag team you formed with your brother, Samu, the Head Shrinkers, when you were in the WWF. Uh, how was it forming that tag team with your brother? Well, I mean, after it was him and, uh, you know, Rikishi, which was fought too, uh, they were on there. And then once my brother finished that, then I started tagging up with him. I mean, I enjoy uh, wrestling with my family. You know, that's always going to be, you know, something that's dear and true to my heart. Uh, you know, we had a great time. You know, my brother, I always looked up to my older brother. He was like my idol, you know, besides my dad and my uncle. But my older brother, Samuel, he, he just had this... I don't know, his charisma, and I always looked up to him, so it was always an honor to to tag up with him. Now, when you look back at your run as the Head Shrinkers, was there a favorite match you guys had or maybe some favorite opponent, opponents that you guys had? <laughs> yeah, believe it or not, we, we wrestled a lot against uh, the Bushwhackers, and uh, we had some great matches with them, and uh, one of them was uh, with the Road Warriors. Uh, I'll never forget that. It was a great, you know, we had some great matches with them, which, you know, my brother and Fatu uh, was used to go as the, the Samoan SWAT team years ago in Dallas. And uh, they wrestled against them in WCW for years and years. But when me and my brother got together, I finally got to, you know, wrestle with them. And, you know, that was, that was some good moments. Well, tell me something about that. Well, what stood out to you when you wrestled the Road Warriors? <laughs> well, God rest his God rest his soul, uh, Hawk. You know, he he's just full of fire. Right. He was just full of fire, man. It it was like going in there with the firecracker. He was he was on top of things, and you know, just to be in there with them. You know, they're legends. Uh, you know, and everything as well. And you know, just to be in there with them, it, it, that was a that was an honor right there. It, sure. It was it was good. Sure. So after your time in the WWF, you wrestled for the Puerto Rican World Council ran by WWE Hall of Famer Carlos Colon Sr. How did that relationship form with them, and how did your experience there, how did it help you grow, uh, not only as a wrestler, but as a performer? Well, I'll start from the beginning on that one. Uh, Back in 1992, when I first started doing some stuff for WWF, that's when it was WWF at that time. Right. Uh, you know, they wanted to do some different, uh, you know, characters. I mean, at that time, you know, I was still young. I had, uh, you know, a few years in the business, but I just wanted to, you know, get used to what I, what they want or just try to, you know, try something different before I went in there and took on this big task. And uh, my dad got me set up to go over to Puerto Rico and uh, talk to Carlos Colon. And I went over there and I actually was over there with my Uncle Sika. He was there. And, you know, I... I, I I did great over there, and then Carlos loved me, and he always kept me on top, and, you know, I uh, got a great relationship with uh, Carlos Colon, and as well as his, his two boys, uh, uh, Carlitos, and, uh, you know, Eddie Colon, which is in WWE right now, and his cousin, so uh, I got a great bond with them, you know, it's like a, a second family almost, because right. I spent a lot of time working over there for WWC. So around 1996, 1997 time frame, you trans, uh, transitioned over to ECW, 
and you wrestled under the name L.A. Smooth. Who came up with that name and that character style while you were in uh, ECW? Well, actually, uh, my brother Samu and uh, my cousin uh, Matt Rosie, got wrestled. So they started off, and then uh, Paul Lee decided to bring me in there, and we to do uh, you know three man tag with the you know and work with the Dudleys and and all those guys. So we did our first. Uh, show with them actually in Allentown, Pennsylvania, and we uh, did a, a, something with the Dudleys and all that, so uh, it, w- it was good. I enjoyed ECW. It was wild. It was crazy, you know, and that company, uh, Extreme Championship Wrestling, it was extreme, and uh, that that's what we like to do. We're, we're, we're extreme. You know, we don't hold no punches back, so uh, that was right up Paulie's, uh, you know, uh, way of uh, wanting some crazy guys in there, and that's what we did. We took on the gangsters, and uh, uh, there's so many stories with those guys, it's not even funny. So the name L.A. Smooth, who come up with that? Did you come up with that? Is that something uh, Paul Heyman came yeah, up with? Yeah, actually I did, uh, you know, because uh, they wanted to do the Samoan gangsters, so everybody came up with a different name. Uh, my brother had Sammy Silk, and he had uh, Maddie Smalls, and so I was like, you know, I don't know. Lloyd on the L.A. So I said, let's go with L.A. Smooth, and, and it's stuck. Nice. So how was your experience with Paul Heyman? Um, what did you learn or take away from your experience with him? And, and not just him, but the other wrestlers that were in the locker room. Well, there was a lot of guys there that I actually, you know, remember breaking in, you know, years ago with, uh, you know, like Tommy Dreamer and uh, a lot of those guys. And, uh, you know, uh, there's just quite a bit of them. I, there's so many of them. I can't even name them. But uh, it, it was a good experience. Paul Heyman was, he's a businessman, you know, just like Vince is. Very smart. Very, very smart when it comes to business, for, you know, for the wrestling business. He had uh, a mind, and, and that's how ECW grew so so big because he was the, you know, he was the brain of it. Right, and he's always been smart, uh, you know, when it comes to wrestling. Even when he was managing my brother and my cousin, uh, he's he's just, you know, he's a magnet. You know, he he's got the mouth for it and he's got the brains for it. So it, it was good working for him. And you know, right now I still have a great relationship with him. When I see him, it's always you know a hug and hey brother, how you doing? You know, so it, it was a good experience. And uh, Paul's a, Paul's a good guy. Well, I've interviewed a lot of a lot of wrestlers who work for ECW and. They all seem to say the same thing. There was this freedom with your character. Uh, there was a family atmosphere, and everybody seemed to just have the same vision and the same passion. Would you say that was a, a pretty fair assessment? Yeah, it definitely was. You know, it, it, it wasn't. There was no pressure. You right. Know, there was nothing to where you know you had somebody behind you all the time. He gave you your options. If you came up with something and they, he liked it, he let you go with it. Uh, it was yeah, it was very easy, and everybody was like family. We have seen each other. We were we enjoyed each other's time, and uh, you know that that's the way it should be. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, just that 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 ability to have some freedom over your character. I mean, that's got to go along. It has to go a long way. Yeah, and especially for him to uh, actually, you know, have confidence in that person to, right. to, you know, let them, you know, come up with something and let them go with it. I mean, yeah, I mean, if, if a guy feels like he's being trusted, a, a, a talent, man or woman, feeling like, you know what, they trust me, um, you know, giving me the ability to have more creative control, that's got to boost, not only just boost their confidence, but also boost the their ability to put on a better show, to be a better performer, because they feel like, you know what, I'm a little bit in control of this character. I'm not being told what to do like a robot. Um, you know, I'm going to make the best of this. I'm going to give it all I have. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that, that definitely does, yes. All right, so this is the cranium shot portion of the interview. I'm going to say a name from your past or your present, and I want you to give me a, your first reaction. It can be a one-word reaction or it can be several words. Okay, you ready? Yes, sir. All right, Rhino. The Steiner Brothers. (laughs) Tougher. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Tatanka. Tatanka. Workhorse. He's he's, he's unbelievable. Just unbelievable. I've heard that about him. Sorry, Savio Vega. Savio Vega. Great worker. Good experience. Uh, 
all around, you know, awesome. Tommy Dreamer. Tommy Dreamer, man. Unbelievable and smart at the business. Just uh, he's, he's one of a kind. Well, Lloyd, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. I really do appreciate it. It's been a, an honor to speak with you, and I just I cannot thank you enough. No, I, I appreciate this. And, uh, you know, down there in Griffin, Georgia, yeah, for you people listening to this, you better get your tickets because it's going to be one hell of a show uh, on February the 2nd in Griffin, Georgia. And uh, get your tickets now because they're going fast because you got – L.A. Smooth slash Alofa, one of the Samoan Dynasty, going to be there, and a lot of other great talent. Mil Muentes, uh, you name it, they're, they're going to be there, so you need to get your tickets. No doubt about it. It's going to be It's a stacked card. It's an unbelievable show, and if you miss this, you're, you're definitely missing out. No question about it. Absolutely. Before we go, how can fans find you on social media? Uh, you got, I'm on Facebook under my name Lloyd on Y.E. I'm on Twitter, same name, and uh, also on the, you know uh, Instagram. So just look up Lloyd on Y.E. and you'll find me on there. Also, too, I do have a a fan page on uh, on uh, Facebook uh, under the Great Alofa, and you can go on there and see some stories and uh, you know hit the like button on it. But Lloyd, man, thank you so very much. Again, I look forward to seeing you down in Griffin. Uh, it'll be a pleasure to see you down there. All right, my brother. Take care, and God, thank you very much, and God bless. Same to you, buddy. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure you buy a ticket to Universal Championship Wrestling Super Brawl Show taking place on Saturday, February the 2nd. at Super Bowl weekend. Saturday, February the 2nd in Griffin, Georgia. Buying a ticket is extremely easy. Just go to their website. It's ucwtv.com. Again, ucwtv.com. If you want to find out the latest happenings in UCW, keep up with their next show, keep up with all their talent, follow them on Instagram, follow them on Twitter, at ucwtv, and also follow them on Facebook, Universal Championship Wrestling. Thank you for listening in on this interview with Lloyd Anuai. My next show coming up will be the Royal Rumble predictions and, of course, Cranium correspondence that will go along with that, talking about the world of professional wrestling, what's happening, what's the newest and latest news uh, taking place, my opinions on that. You don't want to miss that prediction show. I'm sure my guest, my co-host, will be Addy Go doing our predictions. Let's see how we do on the Royal Rumble pay-per-view. So be on the lookout for that show coming up next week. As always, I thank you for taking another chair shot to the cranium. Have a good one.